This is another Equipment Zone webinar series. I am joined by my co-host, Terry Combs, the OG of DTG. Uh, he has uh, not only a sales background, but is an amazing trainer and speaker. Terry, we're glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you, Jay. I also have our special featured guest, Paul Zingone from Vastex International. Paul is our special guest because he's the guy that knows the most about these drivers. Definitely more than me, and uh, we're excited. Paul, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to, good to be here and share some information. Well, thanks from Sunny PA. Um, there's a reference there. I'll just let that hang. Uh, but we are, uh, <laughs> Terry and I are both in uh, uh, amazing uh, triple digit weather here in Arizona. So I'm not sure what you're faced with, but we're, we're kind of already hot, aren't we, Terry? A little slice of paradise here in, in, <laughs> in the knocking on the door of 110 probably today. <laughs> Man, it's summertime. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's stop the banter and the chit chat. We've got a lot of folks tuned in today who are excited to learn more about dryers and curing DTG prints, um, water-based ink with, with an infrared curing system. So I'm going to let you two take over and I'll, I'll jump in. I'll be watching the chat and some of the Q and A's or something that needs clarifying. I'll try to break in, but really this is a discussion between you two. So I'm going to let Terry take it away. All right. Well, hey, Paul, the, uh, the uh, last time you and I had a conversation about conveyor dryers uh, with DTG was at the, uh, at the DAX show in Kansas City. You sat in on a, on a panel for the two regular guys, and, and uh, we had three other people, so we didn't get to dig very deep into this. So, so let's talk about conveyor dryers, all right? That's good. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> Remember back when we did trade shows? <laughs> uh, I, miss, I miss trade shows. I miss the customers and talking to people live. It was great. <laughs> there are literally people who come into the industry who now have never gone to a trade show. There haven't been any trade shows. So yeah, that's why these are stuff like this is great. The webinars. I mean, it's it's a fantastic resource for people starting and just they miss that live interaction. It's, it's great. Exactly right. Exactly right. And also, as Jay said, the opportunity to uh, ask questions here as, as we go along. But, but first of all, you know, uh, when, when you think about direct-to-garment printing, you see at trade shows uh, a direct-to-garment printer and right next to it uh, is a heat press. Can you properly cure a DTG printed garment in a conveyor dryer? You can. It, it depends a little bit on the conveyor dryer. Um, the way that we set up our dryers, it's, it's a little bit different with the heat zones and, and how it's cured. Um, but it, you, you can still get a great cure. The nice thing is you don't have the, the pressure on the shirt. So you're not dulling down the colors with the pressure and getting that, that kind of glossier vinyl heat press look. Um, so you end up with a little bit more screen printed look and feel to it as well. So absolutely possible to cure with a, with a conveyor dryer. You know, speaking of screen printers, you can always spot the screen printers at trade shows. Uh, I know that you guys uh, ha have uh, dryers set up in your booth, and and we are usually close by, and we'll run over and drop shirts onto your dryer belt, and and you can always spot the screen printers, right? Because they're the ones that take that shirt off the belt, and then they try to stretch it to yep. see if the print. Okay, America and the rest of the world, this is water-based ink. When you stretch it, that's that's to see if plastisol is cured. This yep. is water-based ink. You're, that's not going to tell you anything by stretching that shirt. All it's yep, telling us bit. is your screen printer. <laughs> 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 All right. So, you know, you, you mentioned about the, the different heat zones and things like that. So I, I have a lot of people say, well, I have a conveyor dryer. I have a screen printing shop. So can I, can I use that? Can any screen print dryer cure DTG ink? Sure. So here's, I mean, here's the easiest way for, I mean, when we explain it with, most average conveyor dryers, my, most of the ones that we make that aren't specifically for DTG, what happens is you start heating up your ink. It starts at 100 degrees, 150, 200. It keeps climbing until it reaches the end of the dryer. So Plastisol, that's fine for because you just need to reach 320. You don't need it at 320 for a minute and a half, two minutes like you do for DTG. So the problem is once you get to 320, you don't have that dwell time. It's coming out the back of the dryer at that point. With DG, DTG, you really need that 320, 320 degrees for a minute and a half, two minutes. So you, you have to kind of walk a bit of a, a tightrope with it. And that's what these dryers are set up for to make it easier. We have, um, this one's actually a three zone behind me. Most of our Little Red XD series dryers are two zones. So we have a boost heater in the front. What that boost heater does, it's a small portion that we set to 
950, 1,000 degrees. It's almost, I mean, it's like microwaving it. it. It just zaps it with heat so fast it gets it to temperature within the first 15, 20, 30 seconds, depending on the dryer. So now you're at your temperature, you're at your 320, 325, the rest of the dryer, the other two feet or two and a half feet of dryer is to hold it at that 320. So the back zones, um, the back heaters, you can adjust the height, you can adjust the temperature. So you get it to 320 and it just stays there. You get a nice, nice even cure. Um, and I know you guys have the, the profiles to show how we, how we do that. Um, that, that kind of mimics how a heat press works. You get 320 and then it stays there. Exactly. You know, and I think that's a confusing thing for a lot of folks, especially screen printers, because understanding that principle of a plastisol ink, and, and you're absolutely correct, you've got to get that, that ink film, that thickness up to that temperature. And the second it reaches that temperature, it's cured. Yep. And, and, and so that's why, you know, as you said, uh, for, to cure plastisol, as long as it reaches the, that entire thickness, reaches it by the time it, each, it, it reaches the end of the belt, um, it's cured, but again, as you you know, as you mentioned, water-based ink is a whole different animal. I, you know, I tell people uh, when they ask me if about using the dryer that they have in their shop, I always say, "Do you print any water-based ink in your screen print shop?" And if they say yes, and they get a good cure, uh, I always say, "You know, you're probably going to be perfectly fine then, because it, you know, water-based ink is water-based ink, basically." Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Paul, and even on the panel that, that we had in, uh, there in Kansas City, uh, there was a conversation about there, there are people who will say out there in the world that you have to have forced air in your conveyor dryer to cure water-based sink. What's, what's your, uh, your comment on that? Well, years ago, that, I mean, that's, that's what we thought. Even we had dryers with forced air. My big conveyor at my shop is a forced air dryer because... I was, I want to do water-based discharge inks for screen printing. And I was told you need to have forced air. This was 10 years ago, my first Vastex dryer. Um, but what happens is with the forced air, you're, what you want to do with water-based is evaporate the water out. It, it makes sense. You get the water out, it dries. If you have forced air and most dryers, most infrared dryers, you're just blowing cool air. So you're cooling the shirt at the same time. So it actually slows down the process. It's like trying to boil water and putting a fan over that boiling pot of water. It'll, it'll actually slow it down. What we do is have a, a good powerful exhaust. So it gets that moisture out of the chamber, um, exhausts it out. That's really what we're looking for with those dryers. That, that'll help you a little bit more. Aside from superheating that air, if you can superheat that air and blow 700 degree air down, then it would make a difference. Um, but outside of that, you, you really don't need it to, to, to cure it as a lot of people think you do. You know, it's interesting when you say about having the exhaust and that I'm sure that's the key to this process of, of curing water-based sink because, you know, I'll have people, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about before we went on the air about teaching screen printing classes and, and I'll have people call me up and say, Hey, I, I have to keep turning my dryer down because my shirts are, are just burning up in there. There's the, the dryer's full of smoke. Yep. And, and I have to remind them, you know, you're in Minnesota and, <laughs> and that isn't smoke, that's steam. That's a, that those garments are, are letting loose of all that moisture in them. And, yep. and, and, and the reason you're not getting a cure because you think you're cooking their shirts, you keep turning down the temperature, but the, the fact that you have this, uh, this exhaust, that's, that's got to be the key to, uh, to making this work without forced air. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know we just, the, um, our profile just popped up on, on the screen. So if you don't mind, I can explain that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, that, that's, that's basically what I was talking about with how we're getting it up to temperature and holding it there. Obviously you can see that zero to 60 seconds is where we're ramping up the temperature to that 320. And that's, that's kind of your sweet point. Now, if you didn't have adjustable heat zones and adjustable heater heights, that would just keep climbing and climbing. So imagine another, another minute and a half, two minutes at that same climb, you're, you're, you're going to have charred shirts at, at the end of it. It probably wouldn't be good. Um, 
that that kind of shows how you get it up to, to temperature and, and hold it. Uh, on the left side, you see the, the heater height. So something like that's for our um, X3D. So it actually has three heaters in it. Each heater is independently adjustable. So you can raise and lower those. Obviously the, the middle one, you could raise up a little bit because it has heat from both sides, from both of those heaters. And then the last one we dropped down. So now you have to fight ambient air a little bit coming in the back end of the dryer. Right. So if we lower it, it'll actually keep that, that nice even temperature right until it comes out of the dryer. Right, gotcha. Okay, so in, in also in this process uh, of direct garment printing, we're pre-treating. And, and for anybody who's listening who, who doesn't uh, right now do direct garment printing, but possibly you're a screen printer, pre-treating is basically uh, like flashing when you, uh, when you print a white underbase. A screen printer is going to print a white underbase. They're going to put it under a flash unit to gel that ink to give you a base to print on. And uh, then you're going to print your colors on top. Uh, pre-treating does exactly the same thing. When the white ink touches that pre-treat on the shirt, it starts to cure. And, and, and let me uh, share with all of our listeners what the secret ingredient is. It's, nobody will tell you what the secret ingredient to pre-treat is. It's, it's salt water. Uh, three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered by that secret ingredient that goes into pre-treating. <laughs> and so think about this for a second. Um, like, like in screen printing where we're flashing, well, if you have dried salt on the shirt and you put water-based ink on top, well, what's going to happen to that water? The salt's going to try to pull it out. And so it's going to cure from the bottom up. So that's, that's the, the whole point of pre-treating. So anytime you print with white ink, you have to pre-treat the shirt first. So Paul, my question is, if somebody has pre-treated a shirt, can they dry that pre-treat in their conveyor dryer? First of all, I'm glad because I'm learning things. I didn't know about the whole salt thing. So <laughs> the that's, secret. That's, that's, that's the secret. I know everything now. Um, yeah, you can, you can cure your pre or dry your pre-treat in, in the dryer because it's the same process. You need to evaporate that, that water out um, before you put the ink down. It's a little bit different because I still recommend using a heat press just for a couple seconds at the end to, to mat down those fibers because obviously you want the smoothest surface possible when you are printing. Um, so we do have a lot of customers that will run, they'll do their pre-treat, they'll run it through the dryer and just, I mean, two, three seconds with the heat press um, and, and, and then they're ready to print. You know, uh, someone on our Facebook page just a couple of days ago asked, do I need a heat press at all? And, and my response was, uh, can you cure, can you, can you dry the pre-treat? Can you cure the shirt with a conveyor dryer? Yes. Do you uh, ever need a heat press? Probably. And for exactly the same reason, because with direct to garment printing, you can get such fine photographic reproduction, such fine detail, the smoother that surface is, the more you can see that detail. And, and so it's all about presentation to your customer. And by, by flattening down that surface, just like you're saying, Paul, you, you, you make that better presentation to your customer. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know what? If, if you have a production shop and, and you don't have a heat press, you're cutting yourself short. You, uh, yeah. There's so many things you can use a heat press for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean whether you're doing vinyl or th there's a lot of different things that you can use your heat press for. I had nylon bags that came in the other day that I had to screen print. And they were folded over in the box. I had to heat press every one of them just to flatten them yeah. out. So th there are always uses for it. If you're only using a, a few seconds here and there for that final, yeah. final pre-treat. I'm going to, I'm going to jump on my soapbox here and, and tell people buy a good quality heat press. Do not cut corners with a heat press. Those, those cheap import heat presses don't heat evenly. And uh, yeah, you know, you got a deal at 300 bucks for a heat press. It's going to be in your dumpster by the end of the year. Whereas a, a good quality um, heat press is going to run you 1200, 1500, $1,600. But you'll have that exact same heat press in your shop 20 years from now. So it's really an investment for the, for the future. So, okay, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> and that, that, that's actually a good point because that, that can lead me into something with, with the dryers too. Talking about the heat presses and when you look at the really good heat presses, the big thing is where the coils are, the spacing of the coils in, right. in that, that heat plat. So the closer they are, the, the better consistency you have. So if you have heat panels that are like that, where the coils are, 
in between, it's, it's just going to cool down. When they're spaced really close together, you get nice, even heat. That's the one big thing with our, our conveyor dryers talking about heaters. The heating elements have very close, close coils. So it makes it very even. So you're not doing this like up and down these peaks and valleys as you're getting between those actual, those strips of heat. Um, yeah. So yeah, same thing, just good quality heat is really important to get a good cure. Exactly right. And speaking of that, so talk to us a little bit about time and temperature for curing uh, water-based DTG ink. Sure. Now that's, um, it's going to vary. So I can give you general ideas and obviously it, we're in Pennsylvania. It's going to be 90% humidity next, next week. And you go to, I don't know, Las Vegas where you get nice dry heat. Obviously that moisture in the air makes a difference. So I always preface what I say when I'm talking about temperatures, like this is your starting point. Um, so if you, if you're looking at the, at the sheet here, first heat zone, that small heat zone is, is almost a thousand degrees. Now, it's only a short amount of time and that's at the heater face. A lot of people get nervous. I only need to get to 320. Why am I at a thousand degrees? That's actually at the heater face. So obviously when you get to the conveyor belt and the shirt, it's, it's nowhere near that, but that's what you need to get it up to temperature. Um, and then we're at about 600 the rest of the way. They do change based on the dryers. This is the X3D. The X2D is a little bit shorter. It's two heating elements instead of three on this one. So you may have a little bit of variation there, um, but you have to play with it a little bit. And right. that's where I always, I always come into, I have, I have my donut probe sitting here. Um, when you are getting your time and your temperature, it's so important to have a good way of testing that because without knowing what temperature your ink's at, you're, I mean, it's kind of a shot in the dark other than, waiting for a customer to get in and say, my shirts, my ink's washing out. Um, right. So most important thing to go along with these dryers. Um, I know a lot of you have seen these, a lot of people haven't, um, donut probes. So you have your, your controller, the probe, this actually, there's a wire that goes down the middle. You press that into the ink. So now you're reading the actual ink temperature. So wire plugs into the controller, you send it through. That's, this is actually how we get those profiles. Every little one of those dots is a reading from your, uh, from your donut probe to, to say what temperature it's at at that point. It's important to have that because if you're running it through and you're almost at the end of the dryer before it reaches 320, you can look back and say, you know what? I know what I need to do. I need it hotter, faster. Let me turn up that boost zone a little bit. And, and get it to temperature quicker so I have that dwell time. Um, it, so Paul, so and, and, and so you you have that meter in your hand as yep. that shirt's going down the belt. And, and so every inch of the way, you're, yep. you're getting a readout of. Yeah, and I'll, I'll have a timer on my phone so I can see it's 30 seconds in, a minute in, minute and a half. I can see where it's at at those points uh, just, just to get a really good reading on it. And, and that helps me know what I need to change. If I need to, maybe my temperature is dipping a little bit in the middle there. You know what, that middle heater, I'll drop a little bit to get it closer to, to hold that heat, to hold that temperature. Um, and once you start playing around with that, you start understanding where you need to make those changes to correct it. Um, and a lot of shops, when they, when they find that, that sweet spot, they, they do stay there for the most part. You know, hey, Paul, you guys don't carry that donut probe, right? That's a... Uh, we, this that specific one, we don't sell. We do sell um, the Atkins probe and then the, uh, this little guy right here. We do yeah. sell those. Um, We're looking probably 325, 350 in that neighborhood. In, in that range, yeah. And, and that's another thing where you want to get a good one because it's, it's such an important piece, just an important tool to have that every day it's it run one shirt through with the probe just to make sure your your temperature is good before you right. run and next 500 shirts it's it's all about testing and you know it's it's funny when you you're talking about uh the dryer different places i'll have somebody call me up and uh and uh, you know of course we use your dryers and in, uh, in some of the classes that i teach around the country and and uh and somebody will go, hey, I bought that exact dryer that we used in class. Can you tell me what the settings are? No, because 
your your situation is entirely different. I mean, uh, Jay and I are in Phoenix. Uh, our average humidity is ten percent. You yeah. know, <laughs> so it's, it's going to be totally entirely different. different. And if, if anybody ever wonders, if you take a shirt that like here it's easy, you don't have it as much. I've had customers where they're having trouble curing. We can't figure out what it is, and I say, where do you store your shirts? And they store their shirts in a back room. They happen to have a humidifier back there. So while these shirts are sitting there, they're sucking moisture out of the air. Right. I said, listen, you need to evaporate that moisture out before you start evaporating the moisture out of the ink. You need to get it out of the shirts. So I had them weigh a shirt, run it through the dryer, and weigh it again so they can see how much moisture. Right. It was about 40% lighter in weight after they ran it through the dryer. That's how much moisture was in the wow. shirt. So I, Pennsylvania, 90% humidity is totally different than, than you guys in Arizona. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Uh hey, Terry, <laughs> Terry, that does sound horrible. This is Jay jumping in from <laughs> up above. I had a couple of questions if I could jump in. Somebody asked specifically about the type of, uh, what would you call that, the electrical hookup, I guess? What type of electrical hookup is required for a conveyor dryer from Vastex? I'm assuming that's the actual type of plug or the... They're probably asking, are they three phase or those, yeah. those types of things? Yeah, we have, I mean, obviously depends on the dryer. So a bigger dryer like this, uh, this is probably one of our bigger dryers that'll stay on a, a single phase. When we get to the really big ones, we do have three phase. Um, three phase is available on all, a lot of the dryers if you do want to cut back on that amp, amp draw. Um, I know mostly what you guys have is, is the X1D, the X2D, the X3D. Right. So those are all standard 240 volt. Um, it's going to vary. I think on the lower end, about 20 amps, go up to about 40, 50, 60 amps on the, on the bigger dryers. So if you need information, I mean, on our website, we have pretty detailed specs on all that. So you can see um, what, what the amp draw is. Um, and I, I know you guys have that too in, in your uh, – the technical data sheets that we, we hand out. Right. And, and also uh, in, uh, in those specifications, you talk about throughput in these different dryers because people are always saying, well, how big of a dryer do I need to buy? And, and you guys have done all that testing uh, beforehand and said, okay, you can cure this many shirts. So then you just have to go backwards and say, well, how many shirts can I print? And you know where you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy once you know how many shirts you print. Um, the other, the nice thing is with DTG, it's so easy to increase your production by adding another printer. If you have one printer today, you get a second printer tomorrow. Obviously, you double your production. If your dryer is maybe a little bit small, you can't keep up with that. We make it really easy to expand those dryers. So you can actually, I don't know if you can see if I'm low enough here. Um, on the on the conveyor here, there's there's two bolts on either side. I think you can see that a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's two bolts on on the front and back on the, on either side. So you can actually remove this conveyor, put another chamber here, another conveyor extension. Actually extend that dryer as you need it. So we have so many customers that they have two printers. They have an X X two D. Let's say they're like, you know what, business is great we're getting two more printers put another chamber on the back of that and now you just double production you didn't have to go buy a whole new big dryer and sell your old one used and and take that loss on it um it, it makes it super easy to do that and just and we've had dryers that are 20 plus feet long because they just keep adding chambers right. as, as they continue to grow which it's a great thing. Every time we sell a chamber only, we know somebody's somebody's doing well and they're increasing their production. Right, right, exactly. Hey, Jay, did you have some other questions or? Somebody asked about gas dryers. Is that appropriate to talk to? Yeah, yeah, we could talk gas dryers. We don't we don't sell them. We don't make them. Um, the 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 big question is gas versus electric and. With, with our electric dryers, the, the nice thing is it's a much smaller footprint. The gas dryers, you are um, big, big dryers sometimes on those. And what we can do in a six foot, seven foot long dryer, you might need a 15 to 20 foot long dryer for. So that, that makes a big difference there. If, you're, if you have a small, smaller shop and you can't fit that, 
Um, the other thing is now you have, you have to plumb gas lines and you have to worry about that. Exhaust becomes more important. If I need to move my dryer, I can roll it right out of the way from one, I can move it, sweep under it if I need to. With gas dryers, once you put them down, they're kind of there. You're not, you're not moving those around too often. Right. Well, you know, and a, a lot of it, Paul, is, is efficiency as well. Yep. Uh, and and uh, I, I remember there's a, there's a dryer company that is no longer in business many years uh, in the past, National Dryer. And uh, I don't, you, you may not have even heard of them. I think they far predate you. But uh, I remember uh, going into a shop and putting my hand on top of their national dryer. And I thought I'd put my hand on a hot plate. I mean, yeah. it was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously, you're losing all that heat, that the, the efficiency of that. And, and you know, that's, that's not the case with, uh, with the Vastex dryers. Oh, yeah. yeah and, and I'm speaking to the, the coolness on the outside. When we, when we do have our exhaust going through the dryer, it circulates around the skin of the dryer. So if you touch the top, if I was to, when this is running, touch the top, it's warm to the touch. I mean, some of the dryers, right. like this big red, it stays cool. I, I use a big dryer in my shop. I can put a glass of ice water on there, print half the day, and it, there's still ice at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people think like, oh, what does that matter? Well, if you're in Arizona, all that heat coming off the dryer is just warming up your shop. Right. Especially with DTG, you don't want all that heat. Right. Exactly. Just in right. the shop. You don't need a 90 degree shop when, when you're trying to print <laughs> with those things. Exactly. So, so talk to us a little bit about, you know, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages of going the conveyor dryer route? Um, what versus, yeah, versus just a heat press? Correct. Um, one of the big advantages is, is the look and feel. That's what we hear most is it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't sometimes lose the detail when you're pressing down with that pressure, the detail, it mats down, mats the colors down a little bit. It mutes the colors. Um, so you do sometimes get more vibrant colors with it. Uh, the one word we hear a lot is retail ready. We get a lot of people that say you don't get the platinum mark around the outside right. because the, because of the heat press. So when you're done with it, you can put it on a shelf and it's, it's done, it's ready. You don't have to worry about telling your customer like, oh, that mark around the outside. Yeah, first time you wash it, it'll go away. You don't really have to worry about that with it. Um, so that's kind of one of the big, big benefits is, it, uh, is with it. And again, it, it has, and you, you felt the shirts, you run your hand across and sometimes with, with the heat press, it does have a little bit of a vinyl -y that that right. feel to it, that heat pressed feel. Um, customers you know, really like that. Yeah, you know, Paul, what we see a lot of is uh, when somebody has a, a, a small shop, maybe, a, maybe they have it in a, a second bedroom. Yeah. Uh, they'll have the printer, they'll have a heat press, you know, they'll have some, some method to pre-treat shirts. But once they start expanding, that's when they start looking at conveyor dryers because, you know, you can, well, uh, here in Phoenix, there's, a, there's an operator, they have five, uh, F twenty one hundreds. Well, okay. they they have a Vastex dryer, that, and, and I think when they had two printers, they were using heat presses. And when they went okay. to four and five, and I think uh, going to seven, they obviously, in fact, they they uh, are in the process right now of ordering yet a larger Vastex dryer from you okay. because they're going to be running two dryers. Yeah, and it, it gives them the opportunity to worry about focus on the printers instead of putting on the heat press, popping in it. When it pops up, pull it off, put another shirt on. You're throwing it on the dryer. So it's, right. it's man hours. It's, it's labor that you're saving there. So if you do have a, a five or six printers, you can just pull it, throw it on the dryer, go to the next one, pull it. You're focusing on the printers instead of what you're doing over here with, with your curing process, right. but knowing it's coming out cured. You know, uh, interestingly enough, too, you, you were talking about the efficiency of the dryer so they're not heating the room. And you're exactly right. You, you need to have a direct -to any direct-to-garment printer in, a, in more of an office-type environment. So uh, operating a dryer like the Vastex dryer is going, going to help with that efficiency. And, and you know, the, the local printer, and Jay and I have both been to, to this shop, and, and I've heard other people doing this as well, where they actually have that dryer, the in feed is, is coming in from outside the wall. Yep. And, and, and so the shirts are going on the dryer belt and they're coming off the dryer belt out in the warehouse. 
yep. there's somebody out there just sorting shirts. And so it's really a great way to keep your DTG printer in the proper environment and then your conveyor dryer in the proper environment. Yep. Yep, it's yeah. That, I, we we've seen that before too. On I mean, even on the screen printing side, it's sure because they're, they're used to all this heat just pumping into the room, and you don't need it if 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 you can avoid it. It, it saves on electricity bills, building extra walls, and having to go from room to room to run to the back to check and make sure you're still curing. Right, properly. right. So yeah, that, it's uh, the it, screen printers don't start working at six a.m. because they like to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to try to get a jump on uh, the heat of the day because yep. those dryers are going to heat up your room no matter what. But uh, <laughs> that's why there's a lot of overnight printers. I know a lot of guys they they print throughout the night because they don't have the sun beating beating in on their shop all day. Yeah, exactly right, exactly right. Every time those bay doors open, you know that uh, to to bring in a shipment or take one out, you know it's uh, yep. well here in Phoenix, 110 degrees out yeah, here. So. With the, the wall of heat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, talk to us a little bit more about. Um, hey, I'm, I'm buying more printers. Uh, I want to expand. Well, tell us a little bit more about uh, making those dryers bigger and more um, it, it, It's It's really easy. And, and I, I mean, I'll tell you from experience, I've done it before with my dryer expanding it because I went from manual screen printing to automatic. I needed a bigger dryer. So it took, I don't know, 10 minutes to do it because it's it's really four bolts. Drop your, your conveyor extension, your your chamber in there put your back end back on and, and wire it up. Uh, it, it's really simple to do. Obviously you wanna do some new testing now because your, your test that you ran with a two foot chamber and now you have a four foot chamber, you might have to tweak things a little bit, but it's, it's nice to be able to make it that easy. Um, and we have, we have a video online of us upgrading one of our little red dryers from a single chamber to a two chamber. And we kind of did in real time with the, with a clock going and it kind of shows just how easy it is. Yeah. Well, so, you know, um, I think that direct to garment printing is becoming more of a professional decoration method. And, oh, yeah. and I'm, I'm curious back when we had trade shows, uh, what, uh, what kind of uh, response are you getting from the, the folks coming into your boat talking about direct to garment printing? I, I, obviously you're getting more requests. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it years ago, I mean, I've been with fast text, I think about nine years now, but it was in the very, the infancy of direct to garment when I started working. So right. it was a lot of people like, I'm going to get a direct to garment and start a, a screen or a, a company, a clothing company, a clothing line and just print on demand. So it's interesting to see it was a lot of people that they thought they were doing, doing that. And got a little frustrated because obviously printers are much, much better now than they were back then. Um, but now you see those big shops that they are running 10 automatics for screen printing, but then they have, a, they have a dozen DTG printers for fulfillment on smaller orders where somebody comes in and says, I want this design that would be eight colors screen printed, but I want a dozen of them. Right. I want granny's face on a hundredth birthday shirt for her birthday to give out to all the cousins you can't screen print that and do a dozen of them. So you're starting to see these very high end shops that are understanding the, the benefits of direct to garment to keep those customers instead of sending them away and say, nah, I can't do it. Um, and and it, it's a supplement for, for them too, because if you have a lot of walk-in customers, you charge 20, $25 for a shirt because they just want this design on this shirt for, I mean, sometimes even just a joke, but then you also have people that they'll do a thousand direct to garment shirts. Um, and that's all they do. It's, it's, yeah. you see both sides of it now and it's amazing where it's come in, in just nine, 10 years. You know, I think, uh, I think a big part of it, Paul, is the, uh, is the fact that it's an Amazon world, you know, yeah. I, I want it, I want it custom. I want one and I want it today. And, yeah. and if, and if, even if you were a large screen printer and broader or whatever, you're leaving money on the table because that, that business is never going away. No, no. And it's, it's, it's easy for, makes it easier for, like I was saying about clothing line. I know companies that they, they do fulfillment for these clothing lines where they can't afford to get a hundred shirts printed up and have all this stock. So they're acting as a fulfillment company where right. the customer says, I need this design, this design, this one's a large, this is, 
they print it out, ship it for them. And you know what? They sold five different shirts and it didn't, they didn't have to have just shelves of different designs just sitting there waiting and hoping to be sold. Well, you know, and, and so many of our customers are not professional buyers. They, yeah. You know, if, if you're selling to folks who are doing lawn care, the last thing that they want to do is have shirts in, a, in, in, in the, the warehouse, you know, because it's when they hire a new employee and they need a size medium and they yeah. go and that box is empty, they, you know, yeah. <laughs> but that's the opportunity for direct to garment and, and oh, yeah. quarter run uh, types of decorating. Yeah, definitely. So. So Jay, do we have any more questions from our uh, viewers? We do indeed. We have some great questions. Uh, let me pop in and say hello to you guys for just a second, if that's all right. All right. With we see your smiling face. We get a Can chance to stop talking for a minute. That's nice. Well, <laughs> you know, or, or maybe not. Let's just get to the questions. That's more important. So a couple of things that came up were, um, if I buy from Vastex, Will anybody come out to help set up the dryer? Is training included? What what does that delivery look like, uh, Paul? Um, now we we don't we don't go out do training. Um, we're always glad to talk on the phone and, and go over and whatever questions you have help help you understand it. We're we're glad to do that. And, and very very rarely we have a customer that gets it and they're unable to set it up. It's it's a handful of nuts and bolts and that's it on, on the installation. Yeah. It, it, um, it, unlike a direct to garment printer where there are lots of little nuances to get a, a great print that you, you could certainly explain to someone over the phone, what you need to achieve and more than anything, uh, tell them how to test to, to see if they got a good cure. Yeah. So because you guys have been doing this for a while, you have a routine though. You have like delivery set up and you have somebody on staff that can walk somebody through this. I mean, you made it seem like it's pretty simple. It's not, you know, crazy complicated. So yeah. is that just a, a resource or a team or a technician, somebody to, you know how it is. People are new. They're new to the process. They're going to be a little anxious, and a little worried. They just want to know, yeah. is there somebody at Vastex that's going to walk me through this? Yeah. Yeah. We're here. We're here to help. Um, and like I said, the, the installation is simple because I, we have really nice detailed manuals um, for installation. But once you do fire the thing up, get running, we give you that, that profile sheet with the graph and everything uh, with your temperatures of a starting point. And then from there, that's when you'll play with it. If you get stumped and you have a question, you call, you'll talk to myself or Mark, who's I mean, he's been here twice as long as me, but he's like, like a hundred years, right? Yeah, Mark, he's, he's been in the industry a long time too. So <laughs> you're, you're talking to one of us. It's not, it's not a sales. We don't have, just a, a call center where you call gotcha. and they're reading out of a binder. It's like, oh, this is the question. This is the canned answer. You talk to one of us. Um, so we'll be able to walk you through because we want you to be successful with this yeah. stuff. You're really frustrated. Um, we've all been there. I've been there years ago when I started that. I wish I had a resource like that. But right. we want you to succeed with this stuff so you can buy more chambers and more printers down the line. You know, uh, Paul, I was trying to think of all the dryers that I've been involved in uh, with you guys and uh, with direct to garment I can only recall one time uh, having a customer need to call you guys and ask a couple of questions about, uh, so I can't even recall what the question was, but it's pretty self-explanatory once yeah. you get it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, don't, we, don't get, we don't get questions that often on it. It's, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Here's, here's another question, you guys, um, from Mike. Do the same temperatures and times apply for pre-treating shirts or, or are there different times and temperatures? And so if that is the case, would you then like do a whole bunch of pre-treated shirts, make sure they're all dialed in and then go back, change your settings on the dryer and then get ready for print? How, how would you work that? Or what, what are your suggestions? Paul? Uh, what I would recommend is um, you, some people do use the same temperatures and settings for, for the ink and the pre-treat. That's one of those very, it, it could vary so much because you could have customer A with a Wagner paint spray gun, putting their pre-treat on and soaking the shirt. And then you have somebody using the automated ones that are basically putting on the bare minimum. Right. They're going to cure totally different in the dryer. That's well but, said. And for the record, we, we do not endorse or suggest 
a complete dip tank of pretreatment. <laughs> nope. That, that would be too <laughs> much, right? So that's well, on one, one end of the spectrum. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere below that is the power Wagner sprayer. Yeah. And then obviously, because Equipment Zone is a maker and a manufacturer of the speed treater, shout out to the speed treater. Um, we, we think that's the perfect tool for that job. Terry, is, is there any input you could give there? Well, yeah, here, here's the thing. Uh, with, with the direct garment ink, you, yes, you have to maintain temperature to get that ink to cure. For pre-treat, all you have to do is make sure the shirt's dry. And yep. uh, you just have to evaporate the water. So, you know, you certainly should be able to do it much more quickly than, than curing a shirt, especially a color shirt that has a white underbasin and color on top. Uh, you, you probably could uh, could dry that shirt in half the time. And yes, when uh, the question was, you know, do a bunch of pre-treat shirts ahead of time, you could pre-treat shirts a year ahead of time if you want. And and this is one of those crazy things you see on the internet where someone says, well, you've got to print that shirt within two weeks of the time you pre-treated it. That's completely incorrect. Um, once that shirt's pre-treated, it's pre-treated. And uh, our friends over at Image Armor did a test where they pre-treated a dozen shirts and every month they printed one of those shirts and it, it lined them all up and every print looked exactly the same. So yes, go ahead and pre-treat a whole bunch of shirts ahead of time, put them in inventory. Uh, I would suggest, and this is something Paul mentioned before as well, um, before you print it, especially if they've been in storage, hit it with a heat press for five seconds to lay those fibers down again. But, but you just need to have it dry. In the uh, perfect world of a client of ours having two Epson F2100s and they're about to get a third. What size dryer would be best in that specific scenario, Paul? Um, that, I probably like the X, the, the little red X3D. Um, that's probably the sweet point where you have enough dryer to properly cure it because the last thing you want to do is run shirts through twice because they right. cool off, you start over again, you put them through again. Um, the X3D is a good point because I'm trying to think of my numbers on that. Um, but usually I, I, I kind of go for, if you have one printer, the X1D, two printers, X2D, three printers, X3D. That's, that's how I make it, make it easy when I'm, when I'm talking to customers on that. Um, and, and again, it depends because a left chest print versus a full back print or, um, so many things can vary there too, that you might want a little bit larger chamber for that. Um, but yeah, if you tell us how many shirts an hour you print and you, and you guys know that you can tell them pretty close what dryer is going to be best for you. Right. right. You know, and, and it's something else I tell people as well is, you know, and this is all types of decoration where you're using a conveyor dryer, uh, assume some level of, of, of growth in your business. So if this dryer will, will service this one printer, well, chances are fairly good you're going to buy another printer. So if you can afford to, to go ahead and invest in a little bit bigger dryer that, that, that you can grow with, I mean, and obviously you can add, uh, add uh, a chamber to it, but you know, go ahead and buy a dryer that assuming that you're going to have some, some growth of your business and, and so that you don't have to go out and, and expand your dryer right away as well. Good point. Terry, did you know that we do not see you? You turned off your camera or it has dropped. I just thought I'd let you know. I uh, but that was an excellent that. answer. And I appreciate that information, that content. And if I can mention something on that too. He's back. There, there he is. Um, yeah, to, to Terry's point, if you get the bare minimum, you're, you'll always outgrow it. You don't want to do that. And the thing is, when you buy a dryer, it might be an extra 20 or 25% on the cost to get something that does twice as much. So in the long run, you are, you are saving money because I, I think, I forget what the price on the X1D versus the X2D, but it, you get double the production, but it's nowhere near doubling the price. I think it's um, maybe like a 25 or 30% price increase for double the dryer. So, so Paul, for someone who's brand new, help me understand, how do you actually get more production it, it's not the it's not the speed of the belt that's going up right so how am i how is that capacity going up just by adding another zone well you're you're doubling your chamber length so you're doubling your speed if you and it goes by time in the chamber if you need two minutes in the chamber let's say and you have a three foot chamber 
you're going one speed. Now, if you add another two foot chamber, you have four feet of heat. You still need two minutes in that four heat, four feet. You're going twice as fast on the belt to be the same amount of time in that chamber. Perfect. Okay, so you are speeding up the belt in that yeah. case. Yeah. And, and then there's also the opp opportunity of having a wider belt as well. Yep, yep. Okay. And that, that's okay. one thing I, I always tell people, go as wide as you think you'll ever need because you can always go longer. You can never go wider without buying an right. inch wider. Right. So if you want a 54-inch wide dryer, maybe go a little shorter and go 54 inches wide versus a longer chamber and only 30 inches wide. And uh, uh, for our listeners, you know, obviously you could put uh, two or even three shirts across in a, in a dryer that size. So that, yep. that being the point. And, you know, when we're talking about expanding, uh, I think you'll be surprised when people get their businesses going. And even in today's world, today's economy, uh, I had someone just yesterday buy his fourth uh, F2100. He bought his third three weeks ago. <laughs> and wow. I, and I, said, awesome. uh, I said, wow, business must be good. And he says, Terry, it's insane. And, and that's in today's economy. So, you know, people are still buying t-shirts and, and will always buy t-shirts. Never stop wearing t-shirts. Exactly. And especially if they find the right, the right niche, the right cause, the right purpose, you know, they could be going through and, and just be crushing it right now and be, and be in a zone for the next six to, to nine months. It really, it's really about that marketing and the, some of those lessons we started with Terry, you know, earlier on in some of our earlier webinars. Right. Um, let's, let's wrap up with one last question and I, and I'll put you both on the spot and in, in a, in a way, I mean, I, I'm not trying to catch you or, and I know these will be estimates. This isn't perfect science, but I just get, I'd, I'd love to get your take because I think this is about planning. You know, a lot of our clients, Terry, as you know, they'll start with a heat press because of either space or because of budget. Um, but if they are having a successful run at this and they are going to grow into a dryer, it, let's just let's just compare this from the state of production. What would be my output, like number of units per hour, if I went to an XD2, right, two chamber? versus a heat press w would there be a comparison and would i see a significant increase in my output like like what would be the well, differences there uh, let me let me jump in on that here here's the here's the big difference is and i'm sure this is exactly what paul would say you, you're laying that shirt on the dryer belt and you're turning around doing other things now with a heat press you're heat pressing it and yeah you're going to go do something else but but when that that uh arm pops up again, if you have an auto release, you're still going over there and, and working with that shirt. You're taking it off, you're loading another shirt. But with a conveyor dryer, basically your work's done. You put it on the dryer belt and, and, and you forget it. It's, it's going and falling in the box at the end of the belt. Gotcha. So really when you're thinking about it, I, I see it from a production standpoint. You know, I see it from a, how, how, how we're really focused on the printer now, the speed of the print time rather than the speed of the entire production time. Because I know a lot of people get hung up on that. And they say, well, this machine can print X per hour. But I've always thought of it from the perspective of, well, but we, there, there's more to do than just push, you know, smash that blue button. And so if we're thinking about it from, from the, you know, that's why I was excited to have Paul here, is that it might be, it might be an important concept for people to recognize that, you know, if they were doing a full front, full color, you know, on a black garment, Terry, what, what would we normally say? 20 to 30 shirts an hour, depending on the size? Yeah, you, you, you'd be at a, a 10 by 12 image is going to take about two minutes to print. Uh, then if you're putting on a heat press, you're going to heat press it for 90 seconds. Now, you know, we'll have people uh, at trade shows come up and say, okay, it will take six seconds to pre-treat the shirt and 30 seconds to dry it, 40 seconds to dry it. And then I'm going to printed that's going to take two minutes then my heat press it's going to they're like well, it's, it's like takes 10 minutes to print a shirt no it doesn't <laughs> because these are all things that are being done um at the same time you know while while i'm heat pressing or while i put exactly. that shirt on the dryer exactly belt, i'm printing another shirt so yeah so you're looking at a 10 by 12 image and i say 10 by 12 because the average image size whether you're screen printing direct garment printing whatever is about 10 by 12 um, you're looking at probably if you're, you're really efficient, you're probably getting about 25 shirts an hour. Uh, do you, do you think printer. that number would go up then slightly if you were on a, take the heat press out of that element, except for. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're taking okay. out 
the the processing of putting it on there, laying the, the silicone coated parchment paper on, clamping it down, going back over, taking it back off. When you're throwing it on the dryer belt, you know, it's throw it on the belt and forget it and uh, off, off doing more steps in the process. The least steps. amount of times you can touch the shirt and handle the shirt, the better. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Uh, spoken like a spoken like an expert printer. <laughs> Paul Paul knows his way around that that screen print. He's got he's got plastic all under his nails right now. Exactly I right. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't deny that. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this has been fantastic. I appreciate your time, Paul. We have learned a lot about Vastex and about Vastex dryers. Um, thank you for sharing. Is there anything in closing that we ought to know that you want to share? Um, one thing I want to mention on the dryers themselves is, which I, I always forget because it, it's such a great thing that we have, is the warranty. 15-year uh, heater warranty on all of our dryers, and then three years bumper to bumper. The controls, your motor, that's three years. So fantastic warranties. These things, are they're built to last. That's outstanding. You don't that's, want to replace that's incredible it. You warranty. want to extend it. Don't replace it. That's got to be a tagline of yours. Just, yeah, extend it before. don't replace it i think that's the first time i've ever said that one before <laughs> write that down tell mark while you were talking i trademarked that uh, <laughs> terry's already got the url He's, <laughs> i was at uspto.gov <laughs> uh, i lost that one quick <laughs> well that's funny you, you would terry's pretty fast you have to you have to watch him well <laughs> he, here is our um information for those of you who want to follow through follow up if you have any questions about today's um, information uh, feel free to reach out to terry he is very well connected and i'm sure he could coordinate any of these other questions any warranty information any electrical information all of that can be coordinated so please get in touch with terry also for those of you who need tech support there's our tech line um, if you missed a previous webinar or want to catch this again to watch it or, or uh, you know co-worker we, we tip, it typically takes us about a day sometimes two tops to get that previously recorded webinar posted up onto youtube and onto our website so but there are about 20 of those webinars that you could go back and watch some are about marketing some are about printing some are about you know terry's good taste in beer no we haven't covered that yet have we beer and wings <laughs> not surprised we're but coming up on fourth of july so <laughs> <laughs> you're practicing now right right <laughs> paul we are so glad that you joined us thanks again is what's the best way for people to get in touch with you paul if they want to reach out and say hi or if they need a question or an email or a phone number what would you like to share with us yeah i mean if, if you need a vastex.com phone numbers there emails there if you need me directly uh it's p zingone at vastex.com just my first initial last name at vastex.com, um, but feel free to call, ask for me, ask for Mark. We're, we're here to help, um, give you the best service possible. And, and I, I know Equipment Zone is, is, is great to deal with and, we, and we're happy to do this, glad to share some information. Hopefully we can start seeing people in person again soon. Right. <laughs> and I, that's what we really miss is just, but face to face like this is, it, it's great seeing you guys. Awesome, thanks so much, Paul. Thanks again, Paul. I'm going to stop Glad recording. To Take Thank care. You. We'll see each other soon. See you soon.